if I were only able to bring five pedals to a session, you know, it's <laughs> I, it'd be a tough question to answer because, you know, I'd want to bring all of them. But it always depends on my energy because sometimes, most times, I don't feel like fucking bringing the bigger pedal board that carries a lot more pedals than this pedal train nano plus this one only holds up to like five normal sized pedals because there are your tinies or your mini pedals and then your bigger sized pedals like this fucking power wall so depends on my energy usually i don't want to fucking feel like carrying that big ass shit and then it also depends on the genre because every pedal kind of does its own little thing and for this case i guess you know if i'm jamming with the homies that i usually jam with fridays saturday nights uh we usually play indie or or cumbia kind of jams so i don't really need like any fucking fuzz or or distortion but these are the ones i would bring i would get the mordley power wall that one's first in my chain power wall to the most important pedal that is the only pedal that's gonna make you sound good is the uh, well it doesn't matter what kind of tuner it is but a fucking tuner always stay in tune no one wants to hear you tune on stage like that shit's annoying no one wants to fucking hear it then i'll have my behringer cs400 i think um i think it's cs or c5 i'm blind as shit but it's a compressor this one also works on bass so that's why i like it and um, ibanez ts9 just a regular overdrive I like the Boss SD1 too. That one's pretty good. It doesn't cut off as much low end as the TS9. Then after that, I have a modulation, or in this case, it's a Donner Mod Square. I bought this one during the pandemic while this company was still trying to make a name for itself. I thought it was a little fishy that it was like 30 bucks or something like that. I was like, oh, that's probably too good to be true. And damn, that shit. So I do not regret buying it. Uh, then after the last one would be the Sonic Cake, Sonic Ambience. It's a mixture of delay and reverb. It just makes it sound super, super like echo or reverbish. Reverbish. So I'm going to go through what each pedal does. Hopefully you enjoy. Cheers. So this first one we're going to go through today is this Morley Power Wah. It's in the name. It just makes the guitar or any sound or anything you put in through there and through the hole go wah that's it basically nothing else to it it's pretty good for like reggae and ska well, you get the idea, right? It's a fucking wah pedal makes the guitar or whatever input you put in there go wah. If you want to get nerdy about it, it's just a bandpass filter that's moving according to your foot going up and down. Afterwards, I got the most important pedal, which is the tuner. It also works as a mute. That way, when you're tuning, no one fucking hears you tune because that shit's fucking annoying. Now, keep in mind... None of these pedals, besides the tuner, is going to make you sound good. So first, you need to fucking EQ your amp and make it sound good without any other pedals first beforehand. You got to make your amp sound good so that these pedals sound better, gooder. So the second one I have on here is a compressor. And what this usually basically does, it just makes all the strings sound the same volume. And the detriment of that is your dynamics get killed, meaning if I play soft... It's not going to sound soft. It's all going to sound the same volume. And that's why I kind of don't use it when I'm like playing strumming or, or like soft parts because it, they're all going to be pushed up. nothing really fancy about it it's just a compressor does what it does after that i got this fucking overdrive the ts9 i usually use the boss sd1 it was cheaper it was like fucking 60 bucks this one was like uh, i don't know like 100 i think it's an overdrive i like using it i, I kind of always keep it on but like at a low drive setting it just adds some character to it the thing i like about this 
overdrive is that it's touch sensitive meaning that like if i play soft not that much crunch is going to be involved but once it start to dig in that's when like you start hearing the the, the overdrive So when I really start to dig in there, that's when you, you, I guess it sounds a lot more uh, overdriven. Now I have this mod square. Now if I know I'm not going to use anything else in that thing, like the chorus, the phaser, the tremolo, or the flanger, I never use flanger. So now this mod square always comes through because I never know what I'm going to use. Oh, what's up? And usually I always just stick with the vibrato. It's like my always on effect. I always have it on, but just subtly. And now if I know I'm not going to use anything else besides the vibrato, then I'll just bring the Behringer one, the UV300. Now this one, I modded it. I gave it a little toggle switch. And all that switch does, it makes the, the vibrato speed a lot slower. So now I'm going to play that vibrato one. Like I like to have it a lot super, super subtle. I don't even like to have it as noticeable. It just adds like a lot of um retro effect. <laughs> Last but not least, this this Sonic Cake, Sonic Ambience. When I first got it, I didn't really like it. It was just too much reverb, too much delay. No matter how much the settings I, I put it, but I, I still don't like it. But I guess I started using it with the with the jams we've been doing, and then it sounds good when I'm doing like little subtle one hit notes. Like it fills in a lot of space, and that way I have to like. <laughs> not depend on my shitty soloing to make it sound good now i could just hold one note and it sounds all right usually when i take the bigger board i take one delay and one reverb um but in this case since i have that much space to take i'll just fucking go ahead and you know suck it up and take this one <laughs> 